Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're on part four of the oscilloscope overview. Today we're starting off with chapter three to set the horizontal system. And that includes delayed sweep and time-based mode. So delayed sweep can be used to enlarge a length of a waveform horizontally to view waveform details. To enable it, you're going to press menu, which is right here, and then you're going to make sure you're in the YT time base, otherwise you can't enable it. And then you're going to press on under delayed. Then you will see that it's divided into two screens. This is the enlargement of this waveform. So this is the upper enlargement. This is the main time base, 200 microseconds. Let's zoom in. This is the time base, 200 microseconds. This is the delayed sweep time base, and it says zoom 100 microseconds. This is the waveform before enlargement and after enlargement. Okay. The waveform in the area that is not covered by subtransparent blue in the upper part of the screen is the waveform before enlargement. You can turn horizontal position to move the area left and right or turn horizontal scale to enlarge or reduce this area. So if I turn the horizontal position you can see it's moving. Okay, and if I press the horizontal scale, you can see it's enlarging or reducing that area. And you see that reduce. Okay. The waveform in the lower part of the screen is the horizontally expanded waveform. Compared to the main time base, the delayed time base has increased the waveform resolution. The delayed time base should be less than or equal to the main time base. Okay. It says there's a tip in the manual that says you can press down the horizontal scale to directly switch to the delayed sweep mode. So if you just press this button, it'll switch between regular mode and delayed. So that's the shortcut to get to that screen, is just press your horizontal scale button. And that button is this one. It says press menu in the horizontal control area on the front
front panel and then time base to select the time base mode of the oscilloscope. The default is YT. So we're going to press menu and then press time base. And then you can select the time base XY roll. Oops. I keep doing that. This is XY. base and then back to RT. Okay. YT mode. In this mode the, the Y axis represents voltage and the X axis represents time. Only when this mode is enabled can delayed sweep be turned on. In this mode, when the horizontal time base is greater than or equal to 200 milliseconds, the instrument enters slow sweep mode. For the details, please refer to the introduction of slow sweep and roll mode. Okay, next up we have... XY mode. In this mode, the oscilloscope changes the two channels from the voltage time display mode to voltage to voltage display mode. The phase deviation between two signals with the same frequency can be easily measured via Lisa Ju method. method. The figure below shows the measurement schematic diagram of the phase deviation. The signal must be centered horizontally to measure with this method. I can't seem to zoom in. According to sine equals A divided by B or C divided by D, wherein the sine zero is the phase deviation angle between the two channels and the definitions of A, B, C, and D are shown in the figure above. The phase deviation angle is obtained that is zero plus or minus arc sine A divided by B or arc sine C divided by D. If the principal axis of the ellipse is within quadrant 1 and 3, the phase deviation angle obtained should be within quadrant 1 and 4, namely within 0 to pi over 2 or 3 pi divided by 2 to 2 pi. If the principal axis of the ellipse is within quadrant 2 and 4, the phase deviation angle obtained should be within quadrant 2 and 3, namely within pi over 2 to pi, or pi to 3 pi over 2. The xy function can be used to measure the phase deviation occurred when the signal under test passes through a circuit network. Connect the oscilloscope to the circuit to monitor the input and output signals of the circuit. So that's what this mode is for, is to measure the phase deviation.
And then measure, the application example is to measure the phase deviation of the input signals of two channels. So you, it says connect assign to channel one and then connect assign signal with the same frequency and amplitude, but at a 90 degree phase deviation to channel two. Press auto and then adjust the vertical positions of channel one and channel two to zero volts. Set the time base mode to XY and press XY and then select channel one, channel two. Rotate horizontal scale to adjust the sample rate properly to get a better Lisa Ju figure for a better observation of measurement. Rotate vertical scale of channel one and channel two to make signals easy to observe. At this point, the circle as shown in the figure below should be displayed. Observe the measurement results shown in the figure above. According to the measurement schematic diagram of phase deviation, as shown in figure 3-2, A divided by B times C divided by D equals 1. Thus, the phase deviation angle 0 equals plus or minus arc sine 1 equals 90 degrees. The maximum sample rate of XY mode is 500 milliseconds. 500 msa divided by s so i'm not sure what that unit is a generally longer sample waveform can ensure a better display effect of lisa g figure but due to limited limitation of the memory depth you have to reduce the waveform sample rate to acquire longer waveform refer to the introduction in memory depth Therefore, during the measurement, reduce the sample rate properly and acquire a better display effect of the Lisa G figure. When XY mode is enabled, delayed sweep will dis be disabled automatically. Press XY to select channel 1, channel 2, and the instrument automatically turns on the corresponding channels. So you can see it automatically lights up your channel 1 and channel 2 when you go into XY mode. The x-axis tracks the voltage of the first channel. The y-axis tracks the voltage of the second channel. The following functions are not available in XY mode. Delayed sweep, vectors, protocol decoding, acquisition mode, pass-fail test, waveform record, and to set the persistence time. Method two, use the shortcut measurement function. Refer to phase one to two and phase one to two measurement functions of delay and phase on page 6-27. Okay, and next up in horizontal functions we have roll mode. So we'll go to time base. Oh, I'm clicking that. Get on me. Roll. Okay, now we're in roll. <laughs> in this mode, the waveform scrolls from right to left to update the display. The horizontal position and trigger control of the waveform are not available. The range of horizontal scale adjustment is from 200 milliseconds to 50 seconds. When roll mode is enabled, the waveform horizontal position delayed sweep, protocol decoding, pass-fail test, waveform record, to set the persistence time and to trigger the oscilloscope are not available. Slow sweep is similar to roll mode. In YT mode, when the horizontal time base is set to 200 milliseconds per division or slower, the instrument enters slow sweep mode in which the instrument first acquires the data at the left of the trigger point and then waits for a trigger event. After the trigger occurs, the instrument continues to finish the waveform at the right of the trigger point. When slow sweep mode is used to observe low frequency signal, DC channel coupling mode is recommended. Okay. Next up is chapter four to set the sample system. 
contents of this chapter is acquisition mode, sin, sin x of x, sin x over x, sample rate, memory depth, anti-aliasing. Acquisition mode. The acquisition mode is used to control how to generate waveform points from sample points. Press acquire, then mode on the front panel and use the multi-function to just select the desired acquisition mode. Okay, let's find that. Let's go back to our default. Okay, let's turn that off. We're going to go to auto. One more acquire would be. Oh, okay. It's in this menu. Acquires right here. So we'll hit. Acquire. And then we'll go to mode, which is here, right here. And then we'll go with our multifunction. Normal in this mode, the oscilloscope samples the signal at equal time interval to rebuild the waveform. For most of the waveforms, the best display effect can be obtained using this mode. Peak detect. Uh. Okay, peak detect. In this mode, the oscilloscope acquires the maximum and minimum values of the signal within the sample interval to get the envelope of the signal or narrow pulse of the signal that might be lost. In this mode, signal confusion can be prevented, but the noise displayed would be larger. In this mode, the oscilloscope can display all the pulses with pulse widths at least as wide as the sample period. That's, that's a really cool mode. Okay, next we have average. Okay, in this mode, the oscilloscope averages the waveforms from multiple samples to reduce the random noise of the input signal and improve the vertical resolution. Greater number of averages can lower the noise and increase the vertical resolution while at the same time it will slow the response of the displayed waveform to the waveform changes. When average mode is selected, press average and use the multifunction knob to set the desired number of averages. The number of averages can be set to 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, or 1024. The default is 2. Okay, let's change the average just to see. So we're clicking that, it's highlighted, and then we're gonna. Next step is 4, You definitely get the best one with the most samples. <coughs> okay, next up we have high resolution. So, 
This is a high resolution. The mode uses a kind of ultra sample technique to average the neighboring points of the sample waveform to reduce the random noise on the input signal and generate much smoother waveforms on the screen. This is generally used when the sample rate of the digital converter is higher than the storage rate of the acquisition memory. Average and high res modes use different averaging methods. The former uses multi sample average and the latter uses single sample average. Okay, next we have sun x over x. Press sine x over x to enable or disable the dynamic sine interpolation function, which can acquire better restoration of the original waveform. If the number of channels currently turned on is less than 3, sine x over x is grayed out and disabled. So we don't have We don't have that function because we have less than three inputs, or we have less than three channels, so ours is grayed out. Sample rate. The maximum sample rate of the oscilloscope DS1202 is one gigasecond amp over seconds. I may be saying that wrong. It's 1 G S lowercase a over lowercase s. The sample rate is displayed in the status bar at the upper side of the screen and in the SA rate menu and can be changed by adjusting the horizontal time base through horizontal scale or modifying the memory depth. Okay. And that's your sample rate. So that can be changed, it says by adjusting through horizontal scale, which is this one. Okay. You can modify the memory depth, but we haven't learned that yet, or I haven't. <laughs> okay, next up is, it says the influence on the waveform when the sample rate is too low. Waveform distortion. When the sample rate is too low, some waveform details are lost, and the waveform displayed is rather different from the actual signal. Number two, waveform confusion. When the sample rate is lower than twice the actual signal frequency, the Nyquist frequency, the frequency of the waveform rebuilt from the sample data is lower than the actual signal frequency. Waveform leakage. When the sample rate is too low, the waveform rebuilt from the sample data does not reflect all the actual signal information. The memory depth. The memory depth refers to the number of waveform points that the oscilloscope can store in a single trigger sample and it reflects the storage stability of the sample memory. The oscilloscope provides up to 24 memory points standard memory depth.
The relation of memory damp, memory depth, sample rate, and horizontal time-based scale fulfills the equation below. Memory depth, the unit is points. Memory depth equals S rate, sample rate, times the horizontal time-based scale, times the number of grids horizontally. Therefore, under the same horizontal time-based scale, higher memory depth can ensure a higher sample rate. Press acquire, then memory depth, to use the multifunction switch to desired memory depth. The default is auto. So we push acquire, and we go to memory depth. And we go so higher memory depth, higher sample rate. Let's see what they look. Wow. That's 12K. Let's go to auto. See what auto looks like. And auto for this one was. Oh, I didn't say. You can also press memory depth continuously to switch the memory depth. When a single channel is enabled, the memory depths available include auto, 12k points, 120k points, 1.2 million points. 12 million points and 24 million points. When dual channels are enabled, the memory depth available include auto, 6k points, 60k points, 600k points, 6 million points, and 12 million points. In auto mode, the oscilloscope selects the memory depth automatically according to the current sample rate. Anti-aliasing. At slower sweep speed, the sample rate is reduced and dedicated display algorithm can be used to minimize the possibility of aliasing. Press acquire, then anti-aliasing to enable or disable anti-aliasing function. By default, anti-aliasing is disabled and waveform aliasing is more possible. Okay, so it's off right now. We're already in a choir, so we don't have to click it. And it's just off. So. Ours is grayed out, so I don't know. It didn't say why in the menu, so I don't know why. Chapter 5, to trigger the oscilloscope. As for trigger, you can set, set certain trigger condition according to the requirement, and when a waveform in the waveform stream meets this condition, the oscilloscope captures this waveform as well as the neighboring part and displays them on the screen. For digital oscilloscope, it samples waveform continuously no matter whether it is stably triggered, but only stable trigger can ensure stable display. The trigger module ensures that every time base sweep or acquisition starts from user-defined trigger condition. 
Namely, every sweep is synchronous to the acquisition and waveforms acquired overlap to display stable waveform. Trigger settings should be based on the features of the input signal. Thus, you need to have some knowledge of the signal under test to quickly capture the desired waveform. This oscilloscope provides abundant advanced trigger functions which can help you to focus on the desired waveform details. The contents of this chapter Trigger source, trigger mode, trigger coupling, trigger hold off, noise rejection, trigger type, trigger output connector. Trigger source. Press menu, then source in the trigger control area on the front panel to select the desired trigger source. Okay. Missing me out. Okay, that area is over here, so this is the module we're in now, and this, this is trigger, this is where we're at. We're going to press menu, and then we're going to go over here to source, and then we can select channel 1, 2, external, or AC. And we're going to leave it on channel 1. Okay. Analog channel input. Signal input from analog channels, channel 1 and channel 2, can all be used as trigger source. No matter whether the channel selected is enabled, the channel can work normally. External trigger input. The trigger signal e.g. external clock of signal or signal of the circuit under test. Input via the external trigger input trigger. Input terminal external trigger connector can be used as the trigger source. So it's talking about this external trigger connector can be used as the trigger source. When the trigger source is selected, rotate trigger level to set the trigger level within the range from negative 4 volts to 4 volts. So, Okay, when the two analog channels are used to acquire data, you can connect the trigger signal via the external trigger connector and use the signal as the external trigger source. AC line, the trigger signal is obtained from the AC power input of the oscilloscope. AC trigger is usually used to measure signals relevant to the AC power frequency. For example, stable trigger the waveform output from the transformer of a transformer substation. It is mainly used in related measurements of the power industry. Okay. Trigger mode. The following is the schematic diagram of the acquisition memory. To easily understand the trigger event, the acquisition memory is divided into the pre-trigger buffer and post-trigger buffer. After the system runs, the oscilloscope operates by first filling the pre-trigger buffer. It starts searching for a trigger after the pre-trigger buffer is filled. While searching for the trigger, the data sampled will still be transmitted to the pre-trigger buffer. The new data will continuously overwrite the previous data. When a trigger is found, the pre-trigger buffer contains the data acquired just before the trigger. When the oscilloscope fill, will fill the post-trigger buffer and display the data in the acquisition memory. If the acquisition is activated via run-stop, the oscilloscope will repeat this process. If the acquisition is activated via single, the oscilloscope will stop after finishing a single acquisition. You can pan and zoom the waveform currently displayed. Press mode in the trigger area on the front panel or press menu then sweep to select the desired trigger mode. 
So we would press move, then sweep, and I'm going to put mine in auto. The corresponding status light of the mode currently selected turns on. Auto. In this trigger mode, the oscilloscope will force a trigger if the specified trigger condition is not found. Normal. In this trigger mode, the oscilloscope only triggers when the specified trigger condition is found. Single. In this trigger mode, the oscilloscope generates a trigger when the specified trigger condition is found and then stops. In normal and single trigger modes, pressing force can, in, can generate a trigger signal forcibly. Trigger coupling. Trigger coupling decides which kind of components will be transmitted to the trigger module. Please distinguish it from channel coupling. DC, allow DC and AC components into the trigger path. AC, block all the DC components and attenuate signals lower than 75 Hz. LF, reject. Block the DC components and reject the low frequency components lower than 75 kHz. HF reject. Reject high frequency components higher than 75 kHz. Press menu, setting, and then coupling. So we press menu, setting, and then coupling. The default is DC. Trigger, trigger coupling is only valid in the edge trigger. So LFR blocks the DC components and rejects low frequency under 75 kilohertz. And high frequency rejects the high frequency components higher than 75 kilohertz. Okay, I'm leaving that one in DC. Trigger hold off. Trigger hold off can be used to stably trigger complex waveforms such as modulated waveform. Hold off time is the amount of time that the oscilloscope waits for rearming the trigger module after generating a correct trigger. The oscilloscope will not trigger even if the trigger condition is met during the hold off time and will only rearm the trigger module after the hold off time expires. Press menu. And then setting, and then hold off. And then use the multifunction knob. The default, default is 16 nanoseconds. So. Oh. I don't know how you get out of that. <laughs> okay. Setting. Hold off. Let's go back down to the default. 16 nanoseconds. Okay, trigger hold off is not available for video trigger, timeout trigger, setup hold trigger, amp edge trigger, RS-232 trigger, I2C trigger, and SPI trigger. Noise rejection. Noise rejection can reject the high frequency noise in the signal and reduce the possibility of missed trigger of the oscilloscope. Press menu, then press setting, then press noise reject. Okay, so we're already in menu, then setting, and then we hit noise reject. Okay. Next up is 
trigger types. This oscilloscope provides various trigger functions. Among various trigger types, RS-232 trigger, I2C trigger, and SPI trigger are serial bus triggers. It lists edge trigger, pulse trigger, slope trigger, video trigger, pattern trigger, duration trigger, timeout trigger, runt trigger, window, delay, setup hold, nth edge, RS-232, I2C, SPI. Edge. Trigger on the trigger threshold of the specified edge of the input signal. Press type, then rotate to select edge. Okay, menu. We're in edge. Press down the multifunction knob. At this point, the trigger setting is displayed at the upper right corner of the screen. For example, the trigger type is edge trigger, the trigger source is channel 1, and the trigger level is 0.0, .0 volts. So once you press what kind you have right here, edge, it's going to show the symbol for it, and that's the symbol, symbol for edge. The symbol's right here. Let me zoom in so you can see. Okay. So this symbol right here is a symbol for edge. If we go and select pulse, that symbol changes to this. Okay, let's go back and select edge. And you can see there's the edge waypoint. Okay. Press source to open the signal source list and select channel 1 to channel 2, AC or external. For details, please refer to the introduction in trigger source. The current trigger source is displayed at the upper right corner of the screen. Select the channel signal with input as trigger source to obtain stable trigger. So you can select the source under that. And it'll add up, you know, channel source, channel 1, channel 2, external, right here, or channel 2. Okay, we're going to leave it on channel 1. Channel 1. Okay, press slope to select the kind of edge of the input signal on the oscilloscope triggers. The current edge type is displayed at the upper right corner of the screen. The trigger on the rising edge of the input signal when voltage level meets the preset trigger level. So, you can see the waveform for slope. This is this represents the trigger on the rising edge. This next one represents the trigger on the falling edge. And the next one, the next one represents the trigger on the rising or falling edge of the input signal when the voltage level meets the preset trigger level. Okay. So we're going to go back to the default. Which is the rising edge. Okay, trigger mode. Press sweep to open the trigger. Press sweep to open the trigger mode list and select auto, normal, or single. For details, please refer to trigger mode. The corresponding status light of the current trigger mode turns on. 
Okay. There's your sleep function. We just went over that one. Press setting to select the trigger parameters, trigger coupling, trigger hold off, and noise rejection under this trigger type. So under setting, you have trigger coupling, trigger hold off, and noise rejection. That's correct auto. Is that right on stuff? Okay. Okay, trigger level. When the trigger source is an analog channel, trigger occurs only when the signal reaches the preset trigger level. You can modify the level using trigger level at this point. An orange trigger level line and the trigger mark appear on the screen and move up and down with rotation of the knob. The trigger value such as trigger level 164 millivolts at the lower left corner on the screen also changes accordingly. When stopping turning the knob, the trigger level disappears in about two seconds. Okay. It's just telling you that when you change the trigger, it's going to change here on the screen. It's going to move according to how you change it. And then it's going to say at the lower left corner as well. I wish you can't see that. that way. Okay. Pulse trigger. Trigger on the positive or negative pulse with a specific, specified width. In this mode, the oscilloscope will trigger when the pulse width of the input signal satisfies the specified pulse width condition. Press type, rotate the knob to select pulse, and press down. Okay, so we're going to press type. And we're in the trigger menu. And then we're going to press pulse. So you're going to see in the upper right hand corner when you do that, it's going to show you the trigger is pulse type by the symbol, and then your channel one, which if I zoom in, you might be able to see the one. I don't think it's showing up. There's a one in the middle of this block right here. And then it's at 0, 0.0 volts right now. Source selection. Press source to open the signal source and list channel 1, channel 2, or external. For the details, please refer to the introduction and trigger source. The current trigger source is displayed at the upper right corner of the screen. Select channel with signal input as trigger source to obtain stable trigger. Pulse condition. In this oscilloscope, positive pulse width is defined as the time difference between two crossing points of the trigger level and positive pulse. Negative pulse width is defined as the time difference between the two crossing points of the trigger level and negative pulse, as shown in the figure below. So, if this was a square wave, this would be the first square, then this would be the positive pulse width, and if this was the bottom of the square wave, this would be the negative pulse width right here. Okay.
Press 1 to select the desired pulse width condition. Trigger when positive pulse width of the input signal is greater than the specified pulse width. Trigger when the positive pulse's width of the impulse signal is lower than the specified pulse width. Trigger when the positive pulse width of the input signal is greater than the specified lower limit of pulse width and lower than the specified upper limit. So we can change it here, and that's adding the when. Okay, when, and the first one here is trigger when the positive pulse width of the input signal is greater than the specified pulse width. The next one down is trigger when the positive pulse width of the input signal is lower than the specified pulse width. The next one down. Trigger when the positive pulse width of the input signal is greater than the specified lower limit of pulse width and the lower than the specified upper limit. Okay, this waveform, the third one, is trigger when the negative pulse width of the input signal is greater than the specified pulse width. The next one is trigger when the negative pulse width of the input signal is lower than the specified pulse width. And then the last, uh, sorry, that was this one. This one is trigger when the negative pulse width of the input signal is lower than the specified pulse width. And the last one is trigger when the negative pulse width of the input signal is greater than the specified lower limit of the pulse width and lower than the specified upper limit of the pulse width. Okay. When pulse width condition is set to Positive pulse width trigger press setting and use the knob to select a certain value. So let's go to the positive pulse width trigger, which is this one. Hello. Oh. When positive when it keeps doing it. Okay, positive one. And then you can select the range from 8 nanoseconds to 10 nanoseconds. I have microseconds, I don't know why the manual says nanoseconds. guys I think I'm gonna end it there for the night I will see you back next time we'll have oscilloscope number five thanks for watching